What if you could teach Microsoft Purview to recognize sensitive data just like a human would? That's what trainable classifiers do. And today, I'm going to show you how to build one from scratch. In this video, we'll break down trainable classifiers, why they matter to SC401, and how to create and manage them step by step. Trainable classifiers use machine learning to identify content based on examples you provide. Unlike predefined sensitive info types, these classifiers learn patterns from real documents, making them ideal for customer scenarios. To create a trainable classifier from scratch, go to the Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal, navigate to Solutions, Information Protection, and Classifiers, and Trainable Classifiers. You'll see a list of built-in, ready-to-use trainable classifiers that can be used in your purview solutions such as DLP policies, auto-labeling, and insider risk management. The built-in classifiers may not suit your needs, however, and a great example of a custom trainable classifier that you can create yourself in Microsoft Purview, one that's not built-in, could be an employee exit risk classifier. And this could be trained to detect documents, emails, or messages that indicate an employee may be preparing to leave the organization. And it could help HR and security teams proactively manage insider risk. It may look for things like resignation letters or drafts, mentions of job interviews or recruiters, phrases like moving on, new opportunity, notice period or last working day, attachments like updated CVs or resignation templates, references to competitors or job boards. Why this is useful? Well, it's not covered by built-in classifiers. It helps identify potential data exfiltration risks, and it supports insider risk management and HR workflows. To set up your custom classifier, click on Create Trainable Classifier, give it a name and a meaningful description, then click Next. Select a source of positive sample content. This needs to be a SharePoint site, which should include between 50 and 500 files. Click Next and choose SharePoint sites, which in this case will be a source of negative sample content that will be non-matching samples. Click Next, review and create your classifier, and click Create Trainable Classifier. Then click Done. You'll see your newly created classifier at the bottom of the list under a section called Training. You can open it up and see the statistics of the classifier that you have set up. Training can take a few hours, and once complete, you'll see accuracy metrics and can publish the classifier if you wish. When the training is complete, you can go in and view the precision and recall the classifier if needed, add more samples to improve the accuracy, and retrain it periodically. The more diverse and accurate your samples, the smarter your classifier becomes, and you can use Content Explorer to validate how well it's working. You can apply your trainable classifiers in DLP policies, auto-labeling, and insider risk management. Let's take a look at DLP by going to Solutions and DLP. Create a new DLP policy, and when you come to create the rule, give it a name, which in this case is Employee Exit Risk Classifier, and under the conditions, click on Add, and we can select trainable classifiers, and we can choose any of the built-in ones or the custom ones that we have created ourselves and add that to our rule in our DLP policy. Nice and simple. In the context of the SC401 exam, you're going to need to be able to identify when to use trainable classifiers as compared to document fingerprinting, custom sensitive information types, or exact data match. Let's take a look. Trainable classifiers should be used when you want to detect concepts or themes in unstructured text, for example, emails or documents. The data isn't easily defined by keywords or patterns. And you've got sample documents that represent the category, for example, resignation letters, legal contracts, or medical records. And you want contextual understanding, not just pattern matching. A good example would be employee exit risk or legal agreements. Use document fingerprinting when you need to protect specific documents or templates, e.g. contracts, forms, or invoices, when you want to detect exact or near-exact matches to a known document, or the document structure is consistent and sensitive. An example could be a company standard NDA or financial report template. Use exact data match or EDM when you need to detect structured sensitive data from a database or CSV file or when the data includes names, IDs, account numbers, etc., or you want high accuracy and low false positives. Possible examples could be detecting employee payroll data, customer account numbers, or national ID numbers. And use custom sensitive information types when you want to detect specific patterns using regex, keywords, or checksum validation. 
when built-in SIDs don't cover your needs, or you need fine-grained control over detection logic. An example could be a custom format for an internal employee ID. Here's a quick decision guide for you to take note of, which will help you in your exam. If you'd like to see a deeper dive into the subject of trainable classifiers and creating your own custom classifiers, check out the link to my previous video, which goes into much more detail and to which I will link at the end of the video. Trainable classifiers are a powerful tool in your SC401 toolkit. They let you go beyond static rules and adapt to real world data. If this video helped you, please hit like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what classifier you're planning to build. Thank you for watching everyone. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and travel well.